Hello and welcome back. In the previous lecture you learned how to install William Murphy's Super Hands component to create a hoverable controller based interactions and in this lecture we are going to have a look at some interaction gestures that this component allows for. You can make 3D objects react and respond to the inputs from the controls by using the event set component in combination with the so-called reaction components that Superhands comes with. And you should be already familiar with one of these, the hoverable reaction component that we covered in the previous lecture. So let's add a few more of them and see how Superhands can interpret and translate our interaction gestures into actions. I'll start with the red box and attach the clickable reaction component to it which allows you to watch the clicked state that is added to an entity while a button is held down. Therefore, if I create an event called Start and fill the underscore event property with the grab start value to target the green box and set its color to red And then I create another event called end and fill the underscore event property with the grab band value this time to target the green box again and set its color back to green. The clickable reaction component will make it possible for us to achieve the same result we would get with the mouse down and mouse up events. But bear in mind that with the super hands component we are using progressive controls. Therefore not only will this interaction work on standard desktop but also at different degrees of interactivity and on both 3DOF and 6DOF controllers. And so we are actually talking about an array of button event types that can initiate the grab state. For example, trigger down and trigger up, track pad down and track pad up, or a grip down and grip up, just to name a couple. And before the end of this lecture, I'll show you a video where I test this scene using my Gear VR controller again. Okay, let's move on to the next interaction gesture that you can create with the grabbable reaction component. So I'm attaching it to the green box. And if I test it out, you can see that I can freely move our box as I wish. And also hold it in my virtual hand while I move around in our scene. Well, this is as cool as easy. And on top of making an entity movable, the grabbable reaction component can also watch the grabbed state that is added to an entity while it is being carried. So if I copy and paste these start and end events and modify them accordingly to target the blue box, then change its color on grab start to green, Set the color on grab end back to the initial light blue. And finally test the result. You can see how the blue box reacts to my interactions with the green box. Be them a quick mouse button press. Or a button being held down while moving the green box around the scene for as many seconds as I like. Therefore, since both the grabbable and the clickable reaction components use the grab start and grab end values for the underscore event property, you can understand how their behavior is in part similar, and indeed you cannot use both the clickable and the grabbable reaction components on the same entity. And we can also say that both them allow you to grab an object, but the clickable reaction component doesn't allow you to move an entity, whereas the grabbable does. Ok, the next one I'm showing you is the draggable reaction component, that you can use to point at an entity, then press and hold the button down with any controller, 
and finally point at another entity and release the button to perform an action, that is modifying any property value. So I attach it to the yellow box and I create an event called drag. And this time I fill the underscore event property with the drag dash drop value. Then I target the blue box to change its color to yellow. But before you can get this interaction gesture to work, you also need to attach the droppable reaction component to the blue box so that the target entity will respond to the drag entity. Let's test this out. So I click on the yellow box and hold the mouse button down. Then I point at the blue box, release the mouse button and it works as expected. Great. Finally, I'm going to show you a known issue that causes uh, some leftovers uh, when the raycaster intersects overlapping objects. So for example, if I grab the green box and move it behind any of the other three, when I later click on an empty area of the scene and drag the mouse, the green box keeps moving as if I were still pointing at it, until I actually point at the green box again to make the raycaster intersect the entity and clear the leftover. The good news is that this issue will be resolved in A-frame 0.8, and however this is not so evident when using a VR headset and a controller because you can orient the laser pointer with your wrist, so by pointing directly at the objects in your scene it's easier to clear and avoid leftovers. Whereas on standard desktop you need to click and drag your mouse to rotate the camera and look around. Well, it's time to show you the video I recorded while using my Gear VR controller to test interaction gestures in our scene. and they work just great. So this is how you can use interaction gestures in a frame using some interaction components that come with the super hands by William Murphy. And with this lecture you have completed section 5 of the course where you learned different techniques that you can use to interact with the objects in your scenes. The next section will be dedicated to enhancing the virtual environment, where we are going to cover some cool stuff like physics and collisions, sounds and positional audio, video and stereoscopic images. If you have made it so far, congratulations, and I'll see you in the next lecture.